Thank you all for coming to what we expect to be a very interesting talk by Minister Councillor Jin Xu. Before we start the lecture, I would just like to take two minutes of your time, please. Uh, my name is Edward Holroyd Pierce. I'm the co chair of the Young Icebreakers. Um, and my other co chair, Adam, is here in the audience tonight as well. Um, I have a couple of things to mention. Firstly, I would like to draw your attention to our upcoming events. You should all have a flyer on your chairs for our Young Icebreakers seventh anniversary dinner, which is taking place on May the 21st. Now, ticket sales will open on uh, Monday or Tuesday next week, um, and we do expect it to sell out very quickly. So um, please do visit the website and register if you would like to come along. Okay, there are limited spaces. Um, we're very pleased that that event has been sponsored by ICBC and KPMG. Um, and we're looking forward to a really, really good evening that night. Um, and the next event that I would like to mention uh, will take place on the 11th of June. Um, and we will be inviting the chairman of Vodafone, uh, Gerard Clisterly, um, to speak at KPMG. But it won't be in this building. It will be in the Canada Square building. Okay, So uh, you'll be really late if you come here by mistake first. Um, we have a number of other events already firmed up for 2015. So please just keep um, an eye on the website. Uh, and we hope to see as many of you as possible there. Um, I have noticed that tonight we have a lot of uh, non-members who registered extremely quickly to attend tonight's event. Uh, I won't make you raise your hands, but uh, I do need to encourage you to consider joining the club. The smooth, smooth running of the club is only made possible by a stable and growing membership base. Okay, so um, please do go online. All the membership benefits are there. There are very clear distinctions for individual, small corporate and large corporate, and student memberships. So it's very easy to uh, understand. And finally, I would like to thank KPMG for their kind sponsorship of this event. And I would like to invite Richard Reed to come up and say a few words. And perhaps we could have a round of applause to say thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Edward. I, I'm going to be um, uh, very brief indeed. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Richard Reed. I'm the chairman of KPMG here in, in London. And I'm absolutely delighted that we have here tonight MC Jin uh, to talk to us. Um, and I'm incredibly pleased that so many of you have, have come along tonight. Um, it is a very interesting time in China's development, and we will hear a lot more about that uh, later on. It's also quite an interesting time for us here. This is going to be the last event that we hold in this building. Um, so it's a special event for us. Um, this, we've been in this building for 27 years. Um, so in, in many ways, I'm very, very pleased that we're going out on a big bang basis, as it were, um, on something which is very close to my heart, which is, which is China. Um, and it's fantastic that we've got so many people here, a lot of whom who I haven't seen before, and hope we will, uh, we will see, you, we'll see you again. Um, so it's already been mentioned about us moving to Canary Wharf, which will be, as it were, our new normal, um, although I have to say we are still going to have an office um, in, uh, well, a new office, which is uh, being renovated, which is in Grosvenor Street um, in, the, in the West End. So I'm not going to say any more other than um, to ask Stephen Perry, who's the chairman of the 48 Group Club, to come up. And he will be chairing 
uh, tonight's event. So, Stephen, thank you very much indeed. These, these are designed to enable us to lean on as we get older. Uh, Richard, thank you very much indeed for your hospitality, your hosting, and all that you've done over many years for UK-China relations. A lot of what's created the bonding between the UK and China that's enabled these enormous um, leapfrogs in relations on um, trade and investment that have occurred in the recent years is done because of the confidence that's built between people. And Richard has been one of the important people who has done that, particularly with the embassy here in London and with decision makers in Beijing. So we're always delighted to be at KPMG because you're such great hosts, but also to reinforce the importance of people like yourself in the relationship between Britain and China. Thank you all for coming to the closing part of the uh, 48 Group AGM. None of you realize, of course, that's what this is. Uh, and the way we make our numbers look good for a 48 Group Club AGM is by inviting a special speakers and then you all come to the event, and then our AGM looks very well supported. But actually, don't worry, we've already had the AGM, we've already adopted the accounts and all those sorts of things, and we move now in our final part of, the, uh, of our AGM to our traditional event, which is inviting the Minister Councillor from, uh, from the Embassy uh, to talk to us about the developments in the Chinese economy and the relationship between UK and China. Uh, Mr. Jin and I go back. Uh, we didn't recognize each other when we met because it was about 30 years ago that we first came across each other when Mr. Jin began his career and uh, I was uh, trying to uh, develop my career. Uh, but that relationship uh, between what was then the Ministry of Foreign Trade and the 48 Group goes back to 1952, 1953, 1952 when our company was formed to get China trade going, 1953 when we helped to organize the icebreaker mission to China, and 1954 was the founding of the 48 Group. And uh, so we could say uh, that this is a rather special occasion because the 48 Group is moving from being, uh, 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 not that many of you will understand the significance of this, from being an unincorporated uh, body into being a company limited by guarantee. The significance of that is we've got a you know, we've got some significant assets. We have to be better protected from the point of view of corporate governance. And it means that the 48 Group work, which is explaining China, understanding Chinese policies, is growing in importance as we look at the new normal, the changes in China, and we look at the Silk Road developments. Gosh, we've got a lot of work to do, all of us, in understanding China better. I can think of no better way than to begin your time here in London, Mr. Jin, Thank you very much indeed for, I guess this is probably one of your first major public appearances, coming along and talking to us about what we all have heard of called the new normal, and you could tell us something about that. So let me hand over to you. After you finish speaking, we'll do a question and answer session where I'll sit with you, and uh, if you need any help, which you won't, I'll be there. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Jin. Stephen, I should uh, let you know, I will never forget you in my life. You really scared me today. And uh, after now, you know, before I came to the room, I think 48 group, only 48 people. <laughs> but now you have almost 300 people, and many more people on the waiting list. Okay, you should tell me, you should let me know uh, earlier, you know. And also, this last day, last event, KPMG stay in this building, right? Tomorrow, you are going to move to Canary Wharf. That's a much larger place, much more beautiful place. Is that right? OK, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and I should also, you know, call our friend, give a big hand to you, you know, KPMG. <laughs> yeah, Stephen talked about a 48 group. Uh, your father, right, uh, went to China 61 years ago in 1953 uh, with uh, uh, dozens of uh, British business people. How long did they take, do you know? 
10 days, seven days from uh, London to Hong Kong, and uh, three days from Hong Kong to Beijing. That's really a long way. But nowadays, uh, my old friend, Davis, you know, 10 hours, you can from L London to Beijing. It's so easy, right? But 61 years ago, that different story. OK, today, this afternoon, there is a, a friend uh, from uh, uh, London. It's uh, 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 Mr. Guy. I don't want to mention his name, Mr. Guy. And he had uh, two daughters. One is 19, another one is 23. They are studying in universities. He asked me, Jin, yes, can you do me a favor? What? Can you find a boyfriend for my two girls? <laughs> yeah, I think no problem, you know? We have so many young people here, you know, young boys. Are you married? <laughs> no. Okay, I, I ask why. He told me, being in China, you know, the girls don't need to pay the dowry. The boys will pay the bride's wealth for the girls. That's, that's, that's real, right? And ask uh, our friends, you know, uh, Mr. Sun and uh, also, Mr. Lin, you know, did your wife pay anything for you? <laughs> well, you pay everything for them, for your wife, right? Okay, in the 48 group, now uh, you have uh, several, you know, females in the 48 group, icebreaker. And nowadays, more and more young girls, more and more, uh, you know, uh, business people uh, go to China. I think that's a reason why so many young girls from the UK want to go to China. They don't want to pay the dowry, right? Well, how many, how many, how many young girls now married here? Not too much. Uh, they are really very shy. And uh, when I, you know, arrived here two and a half months ago, a friend in. Uh, working here, basically here. I uh, want to invite me to a dinner. And uh, he's really very polite. Uh, Mr. Jin, can we have a dinner together? I said, yes. And uh, what do you prefer, Chinese food or other food? I told him, since i already in London, of course, British food is better for me. It's new for me. But he told me, British food is really awful. <laughs> it's awful? But I think it's OK. The British breakfast is so big portion, right? So that's why so many young people, including your father, want to go to China. They just want to taste Chinese food. Your Chinese food is the best food in the world, is that right? But you didn't ask your father why they want to go to China. Probably that's a reason, right? That's why they want the, the, the beautiful food in China, enjoy Chinese food. So I'm a, you know, a, a little bit you know, tricky, a little bit kidding, you know? That's not a real reason. But I think for the group, Jack Perry, they are really very brief. They have a broad vision people. They know what they can do, and they know what they can do for the next generation, for Stephen Perry. And uh, we have uh, so many people, more and more you know, businesses, more and more trade ties between our two countries. And uh, in the year of 2014, last year, our uh, trade volume reached a record high, more than 80 billion US dollars. And the investment from China to the UK also reached record high, is 7.2 billion US dollars. And uh, this year, according to our two leaders, uh, set a target for us: the trade volume could be 100 billion US dollars. Either could be realized or not, I don't know. 
for if you ask me, I should say, yes, I'm confident for this. Because the relation between our two countries is getting better and better. Uh, this is best period, best time between, for, now, for now two countries. Uh, yesterday, your new ambassador, Barbara Woodworth, uh, were interviewed by Chinese, you know, Xinhua News Agency, talking about the relation between our two countries. She said a lot of good words. Uh, she's very, you know, promising for our uh, future, you know, trade and uh, political relations. And before I uh, come here, you know, I have a, a lot of, uh, I give a lot of pleasure to my colleague, you know. Actually, I don't want to show this, you know. You should show this after I say yes. Yeah. But hey, you know, just, you know, the PPT. I told them to prepare a PPT for, for our audience. And uh, they, they are changing until your last minute. They have so many figures about economic figures, but I cannot remember, uh, uh, remember all, all of them. So I asked them to cut, off, cut a lot of your figures. Don't want to show uh, so many too bad figures. You can put some uh, pictures, like Jack Perry, or some other you know, uh, beautiful pictures. So they put a lot of, uh, they said, that, this picture, you know, the father is not from your, you didn't give me, maybe you don't have this, but we can Google it. We can Baidu from the website. That's what we got from the website. Uh, so they cut it, they add it, add it and cut it until last minute. I don't know, I don't got a copy, you know, before I got here. So uh, let's uh, uh, take a, a few minutes. Let's watch the PPT together. So uh, to see what happens nowadays between our two countries, what happened in China and what's going on with the 48 group. Yeah, the last, year, last year, uh, only about a, nine months ago, this right day, right? And uh, our Prime, Prime Minister Li Keqiang uh, had a meeting with you. I say a lot of uh, things to you. Uh, uh, probably later on, they will tell our friends. And uh, the Jim Onier, right? Everybody know him. He's a very famous economist, also very famous, very popular in China. And what did he say? For the group, it's a really very strange group because they can meet every people in China. They can meet all the senior leaders in China. That's really very strange, but nobody understand. But I think we people here, you know, we understand you why you know, a for the group can have a such privilege. Such a favor, got a such a favor. Yeah, please go ahead. That's your uh, new ambassador. And uh, he, she uh, studied study here, but studied Chinese in, in China. And also uh, uh, she was a teacher in Hubei province for some years. Uh, AIPB, AIPB is not a topic, right? We, we IPB is another you know, icebreaker for some British leaders. And uh, now so many people in, in G8 group apply, or G7 group, they want to apply to be the original member of the AIBB, AIIB. But you are one, you are the icebreaker, you know. You please tell your you know, financial minister, Osman, right? We are really, we, I think he's a brave, brave person, you know. We like him very much, but some people are a little bit jealous of him. Mm, please go ahead. Yeah, economic ties, there are some figures, you know. If you want to note down, we can wait uh, a few seconds. If you don't want to just remember, have a rough picture, we can go it, uh, go it you know, quickly. So, that's the uh, UK exported to China. Yeah, China is the largest uh, uh, market now, largest trade country in the world. As we have, uh, uh, you know, so many goods to export to other countries, but also we open our market. We welcome all the, you know, commodities from different countries, including UK. And the UK is the largest trade partner in, in uh, the largest trade partner in 
uh, one of the largest ones. Your second largest one, but probably a few years later, you will be the largest one. But as for the trade volume, the fast, fastest uh, you know, growing, growing partner, trade partner with China. Yeah, please. Yeah, that's too much. But still, uh, <laughs> yeah. OK. Mm. Should I read it? No, OK, go ahead. Yeah, that's uh, some of the Chinese companies. You know, this is, this is, actually, it's not a Chinese brand. It's a, it's a house of Fraser. Uh, I think a lot of, you know, many beautiful girls, you go to uh, Fraser every day, right? But you should know, the owner is not British people now. They are Chinese people. Are you pleased with that or not? But that's a good thing, you know. It's a mutual benefit, a win-win. And also, uh, that's one is the South, uh, 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 South Africa Standard Bank, uh, Ms. Chen, could you please stand up? Stand up, you know, for our friends. The, the, that lady from uh, Gunghang, from uh, ICBC, ICBC, we have uh, so many Chinese friends. They also, they, you, you can understand my Chinese. Uh, you know the meaning of ICBC, right? Ai chun bu chun. Bu chun la dao. Okay, yeah. And uh, also this one, you know, CGN, uh, CGN is uh, under discussion now, uh, under new negotiation. But we hope that we'll have a good result in this year, uh, because uh, you know our Premier Xi Jinping received invitation from uh, your Queen Elizabeth, and uh, he will pay a visit to UK later this year, probably in October. But hope we we, we hope you know by that time we can have a lot of big contracts to be, to be signed. Go ahead. Yo, wow, yeah. You, why you don't cut it from your 1985 to, uh, to, the, to the last year, right? OK. Mm. That's, that's uh, the British companies invest in China, you know. They, have, uh, they also open their business in China. Prudential, HSBC, and uh, Shell. And BP, Standard Chartered Bank, uh, Unilever. Yeah, please. OK, financial cooperation. Uh, is there any people from a construction bank today? No? So you got a, a license. So that's why you don't want to come here again, right? <laughs> Where's people from a Jianshe Yinghang? No. OK, I will tell them, you know. They are not a good guy. Yeah, yeah, right. They got it, so they leave it, right? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's really very helpful figures. You should remember. But if you want to uh, have it, you know, probably afterwards, I can give you a copy of it. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Okay. Chinese economy, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday is Tiantan near Heaven's Temple, tells the old story, that's for 5,000 years history. And uh, uh, we have an uh, Olympic game in 2008, that's uh, Brunesso, that's the uh, uh, most beautiful, you know, uh, sports stadium in China now. Uh, that's the future, you know, for Chinese dream. That's the figures, we can see from it. In the past 35 years, what we did? Yeah, please. Uh, the, you, 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 everybody know when we talk about a new normal, you should know what is old normal. The old normal is a high speed growth rate. In the past 35 years, you know, GDP growth rate is more than 10 percent. Uh, between the year of 2003 and 2007, it's more than 11.5 percent. But nowadays, last year, it's just 7 percent. So the old style is not desirable anymore. So we will, why, we, why we, we don't want to you know, chase the high speed rate, cruise rate, uh, everybody knows. If you go to China, you can see the land of fog from London moved to Beijing. 
now we can call it Beijing fog almost every day, especially in the winter time, you know. That air pollution, that's a bad, bad side effect. That's not, a, you know, good enough. And also energy, you know, consumption, very, very high. So uh, uh, all the industry lack of innovation. And I think that's not good. That's because of some of the reasons, because of the high speed rate. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. You know, four countries, and what is the trade share in the total, you know, export, in the, in the GDP, in the economy? Yeah, please. Yep, that's the largest uh, railway station in Asia. Uh, probably one of the largest ones in the world also. Uh, this is a high-speed train. And uh, anybody take a Chinese high-speed train? Okay, good. Okay, more and more people now. Some of people are still very shy. <laughs> if you go to China, you should take the express train, you know, high-speed train. And, okay, yeah, from uh, uh, Beijing to Shanghai, it's about uh, 1,300 kilometers. And how many hours? Uh, less than five hours. 1,300 kilometers. And how many hours from London to Manchester City? <laughs> 200 kilometers. Uh, take me about three hours. But it doesn't matter. But when we export our high speed train to UK, well, we, we can solve all the problems. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's really a very beautiful, you know, uh, airport in Beijing. And we call it, uh, you know, T3, Terminal 3 Airport. And we are going to build another one, the much larger airport in the south part of Beijing, uh, near Daxing, near Daxing District. Five years. Within five years, right. And uh, this is the uh, uh, longest, uh, you know, cross sea bridge from, from uh, Zhejiang province to Shanghai. That saved a lot of time. And uh, without this bridge from, uh, Ning from Ningbo to Shanghai, it would take uh, about six hours. And then probably from Shanghai, my figure is correct or not? How many hours did, did you take from, uh, from Shanghai to Ningbo? How many hours? Six hours? How, how long? How long? How many hours? Are you really Shanghai people? <laughs> but you don't know the figure. Uh, more than six hours, yeah. Right. But nowadays, only uh, less than one hour, right? Is that right? How many hours? Half hour? Yeah. Much, much more, only, you know, probably less than two hours. One hour and some more minutes, but less than two hours. Yeah, please, I spent a lot of money, of course. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the concept of uh, what is new, what is normal. Uh, the new, should I read it? Okay, new means we should have different development concepts compared with before. So what is before? That uh, before, uh, you know, 2014, uh, between uh, 2014 and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 17, you know, uh, 78, 1978, sorry. Mm. So uh, shift the gear from a previous high speed to medium high speed growth. Uh, economic structure is uh, constantly improved and upgraded. The economy is uh, increasingly driven by innovation instead of input and uh, investment. Okay, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I, don't, I cannot read it, you know. I study, you know, uh, language, so I don't know the figures. I don't know the portrait. Okay, yeah, well, it's different, you know it better than I, huh? But you can tell everything. Uh, yeah, Richard, yeah, your KPMG people, they know everything, yeah, please. Mm. Innovation, what is innovation driven? The, that, you know, uh, is not a, I made it, not my friend, you know, the public is uh, from the Congress, from the Congress just concluded, uh, concluded a few days ago. 
Yeah, go ahead. Tomorrow, potential of growth. Tomorrow, yeah. When we talk, to, uh, talk to, uh, you know, tomorrow, everything will be, everybody will have a, you know, very beautiful smile on their face. China economy is very promising. Uh, China will be number one. But nowadays, not nowadays, probably a few years later, and uh, uh, the, according to the World Bank statistics, China was the largest economy in the world since last year. But Chinese people, Chinese government say, no, we are not. We are not. We are still number two. But number two in Chinese, not very good. Uh, Lao Er, huh? <laughs> Nobody like Lao Er, huh? But it, that's not reality, you know. We want to be Lao Da. That, uh, that takes time, you know. Yeah, please. A GDP per capita income, China is the largest, even China is the largest economy, but per capita income is still very, very low. You know, we have uh, 1.4 billion people in the world, largest in, largest in the population in the world. And uh, I'm from, uh, Steve asked me, where are you from? I told him I'm from a small province. And uh, which province? I told him the Henan province. So how, how, how many population there? I told him not too much, just 100 million people there. 100 million people in Henan province. That's the largest one in China now. Probably the third largest province in China. Yeah. And don't worry about trying to open up policy. And uh, we have uh, you know, some new, re public, new regulations according to uh, in, on the foreign investment in China. Uh, some people say it's more, getting much more you know, strict now, but uh, I should say no. And uh, I think policy is it's a very, it's very re the regulation is very reasonable. It's good for uh, even in the coming years, it's good for the foreign investors, also good for Chinese economy. Uh, everybody know the Shanghai you know, free, trade, free trade zone. That's a very strange place, very interesting place. A lot of you know, business people, not only from abroad, but also from China, from different provinces, they start, set up their own province, uh, their own business in, in Shanghai, in Pudong, the new uh, free trade zone. Okay, that's one belt, one road. One belt, one road, including a lot of countries. But I asked my friend, where is uh, the UK? Where is the UK? And uh, they told me, on the other hand, Okay, but the map is too small. The next time when we get a big map, we can, you know, include the UK in it. But, but that doesn't mean, you know, the UK cannot play, a, cannot do anything, you know. The UK is doing a lot of job, you know, uh, even in our one belt, one road, you know, policy now. Yeah, please. Yep, but well, that's, uh, uh, that gentleman, you should know him. That's, uh, that's, uh, 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 Number one leader in Manchester City, Manchester City. Uh, but uh, the, the, he's not mayor. He's not mayor. It's a, a speaker in Parliament. Huh? But a leader, right? Leader it, it equals to a mayor, right? A different man. But there's no mayor in that city. He's number one. Not yet. Okay, I don't know your system. <laughs> yeah. In China, every city, they have a, a mayor, uh, we have a governor, uh, we have a even, you know, uh, the manager in the smallest, smallest counties, you know? Yeah. And uh, uh, that's you know, uh, London Stock Exchange. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Susung and uh, Stephen Perry. Yeah, please. Okay, that's a meeting with, um, uh, with, with the leader of uh, uh, Manchester City. Uh, that's before uh, the Chinese New Year, before the, the uh, new ambassador from China. Uh, we uh, were not, a, not, a, not a dinner together, but we went to a, a same event together. We sit together, I took a lot of things. You know. I guess she gave me a lot of interesting stories and what ex she experienced in China about 20 years ago. China invest in the UK, that's really a very hot topic. And now more and more people want to come to London 
and they open a lot of uh, restaurants in London now. That's good news for, for Chinese people, you know, because we, have, we can have more varieties. We can taste different food from China, from Sichuan, from Guangdong, from Shanghai, from uh, Huayang, and from Dongbei, even from Dongbei. Now, the, uh, 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 there is a restaurant, they have even Dongbei dumpling, Dongbei dumpling, Dongbei jiaozi. So really, it's, uh, it's a really big surprise for me, you know. You can taste everything, you know, uh, in the coming years, but they are, uh, now the investments uh, from, uh, for the restaurant is very, 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 very low, not too much, but we have a lot of big investors. And I bought it from uh, Wanda today, Wanda, Okay, when that people, they want to uh, invest about uh, one billion pounds to build a one to one a tallest apartment building in, not only in the UK, but also in, the Euro, in Europe, the tallest building. So I don't know who wants to move to move into that building. Uh, okay, I don't want to say any bad words. That's good, that's good. And also, you know, ABP people, right? No people? ABP people, they also invest about one billion pounds to build a harbor uh, in the east part of London, east part of London. Yeah, good. R&D center. That's, uh, you know, uh, that's what we can do. That's what we can cooperate in the, in the coming years. I know, you know, uh, China, is, we have uh, we are a war, war factory. We produce everything, you know, from the cars to the suckers to shoes. And uh, almost uh, in, uh, in just in Guangdong province, they made, you know, they make socks for about three billion socks for, for the people. Half of the population in the world. You don't want to, you don't need to make. You just consume, you just to buy the socks from Guangdong. That's enough. And the whole China, we produce about a seven billion socks, uh, socks, right? Yeah, seven billion in, just in China, you know? So, uh, but that's just a factory. But now we need more uh, R&D. The R&D is what you can do from the UK uh, for Chinese people. And uh, next week, I'm going to uh, Coventry, right? Coventry, a, a new Chinese factory is going to be uh, opened and China we have a, a factory uh, uh, the uh, car manufacturer is uh, called Jili Jili uh, Jili it's a Coventry it's cover pron 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 pronunciation is right right Coventry right yeah so uh, we know that city uh, they uh, had they happened something you know uh, during the Second World War but now they are uh, in good very good development. Uh, we are going there next week and uh, witness uh, uh, opening ceremony uh, for new factory. So we also, the Chinese people uh, invest a lot of money there, but at the same time, we, we got a lot of, we introduced a lot of high tech and also, uh, you know, software from that factory. That's good for uh, the factory here. Also, that's good for Chinese people, for GD people. Yep, please. Service sector. Service sector, you know, that's all the picture taken, you know, here. Taken in the UK, in London. And uh, you know what you can do and uh, in this afternoon, a lot of people introduce their experiences, what they are doing in China. Uh, for the, you know, service sector, that's the most, uh, you know, important role you can play in the coming years in the UK. From, from, uh, between our two countries, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say, you know, thank you, uh, Stephen, and uh, thank you for the aid group. That's beautiful picture, right? And and uh, Stephen looks a little bit younger than I. <laughs> uh, actually, you are about uh, three years uh, elder. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I see nothing, huh? Okay, but I'm still I'm still senior than you. Okay, thank you very much. That's all the you know, things I want to give it to you and introduce to you. Um, we went through the slide mm. on the Silk Road. Uh, so one, 
Silk Road and Belt yep. quite fast. Mm -hmm. Huge opportunities there. Yes. And the British decision to go into the uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank mm -hmm. is because we can see that the, not just the Chinese market, mm -hmm. but the huge Central Asian market that yep. will open up right. over the next, what, five years? Mm -hmm. Through for the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. So the opportunities there are enormous, not just in construction mm -hmm. of road and rail but, and sea, but also all the shops, all the towns and cities that will be built yeah. through Central Asia. Yes. The British have a keen eye. You have a keen this. eye, you have a you know, very broad vision, mm -hmm. and uh, you are uh, you know, much better than any other you know, uh, G7 you know, countries. Mm -hmm. I think so. Is there any people from Germany? No? Okay, no. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, please. <laughs> uh, I'm not used to this informal uh, atmosphere. <laughs> please introduce yourself and make your question very short because we don't have much time. Yeah, for the new normal, uh, I think until uh, uh, 2030, when China, you know, become the number one economy in the world, probably after 2030, we will, we will have a, we will uh, move into a new, new normal, you know, economy, probably, you know. One of the drivers of uh, your growth is around uh, employment, but Michael, and then David. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ma Michael, Michael Hinsey from uh, CQS. You've had in, China has had a very positive result from the two engines concept, where the, where, where the uh, visible hand of government is working with the invisible hand of the market. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. What have been the challenges, and what are the changes that are going to be happening over the next decade or so? Yeah. Yeah, visible, invisible hands, right? I think China, you know, uh, it, because we have a, a, a much different uh, system, you know, uh, we still call ourselves call ourselves is a socialist country uh, with some you know, characteristics, our special characteristics. So I think, you know, uh, in the coming years, uh, the market will play a, a very important role. But Chinese government also, they can do a lot of uh, things together, you know, because we still have a lot of state-owned companies, state-owned enterprises. So uh, they are still uh, play a very important role in Chinese economy. So you can still see some, you know, visible hands or visible, you know, roles from government. Uh, but we just want to, you know, to know it's good for the market, it's good for the business, it's good for the economy. Otherwise, the government will change their policy. That's why, so, yeah. David? David Powell from the uh, House of Lords. Where are you going to get all the uh, energy to sustain this future expansion? And are you going to be able to do it without uh, increasing carbon emissions? Yeah, the energy, right? You're talking about a crude oil? We can import it from Scotland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, China is the largest consumer of the energy now. You know, gas, crude oil, and many other you know mining you know materials. So uh, for the energy, we have a uh, very you know uh, large resources, but still we are expanding our you know resource from other countries. and put a lot of energies, you know, even uh, from uh, Africa and uh, Latin American countries. About, what about renewable energy? New Ren renewable. renewable. Uh, renewable energy, Low yeah, carbon. right, 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 right. Uh, that's uh, really very impressive for me, you know. And uh, in UK, you, you, your recycling industry, it's very good. And everything, even including the rubbish, in the morning, in the morning which, uh, when we pick our you know, bag, we should choose the right case to put in. And uh, so that we can learn a lot of things. You know, we are not experts. I think uh, UK is much better than China. And uh, we, but we are trying very, 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 very much to 
uh, make our uh, energies are renewable and recyclable, you know, in the future. Uh, that's what we want to learn from, uh, from our British partners. Mm. So nuclear energy plays an important part. Yeah, forward. right, sure, sure. And the gas and oil from Russia also important. Yes, mm, so. from Russia, yeah. You are a little bit jealous from your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like vodka. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ting, and I'm Chiu Lingyun. Uh, currently, I'm doing my full-time MBA and researching on uh, Chinese overseas investment, particularly in UK. Um, so what you see in the future that we had the base case where the growth rate is really, really high. That, um, in terms of the post-investment, the culture uh, integration, uh, how um, Chinese business can actually uh, Corporate with the local uh, workforce and generate growth. Um, what's your thought on that? Thank you. You, you. you mean the workforce here in London, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. So uh, the Chinese economy is now cannot be as, as high as in the past years. Cannot uh, reach you know, 11.5% or even 10%, but still 7% still very high. You know? Every year, uh, even on the basis of a 7% increase, uh, growth. The GDP uh, will be about uh, 800 billion US dollars. The equivalent, equivalent to the whole economy of uh, Turkey, um, about one quarter of the economy of the UK. So uh, it can create a lot of uh, opportunities, but not only the jobs, you know. So in that case, I think we can uh, we can also do many things to encourage Chinese, you know, enterprises to go abroad and uh, to create a lot of more, you know, opportunities for, for the people, for the businesses in, in, in UK, in London, or in some other cities. So uh, you are studying here, right? But originally you're from China. You know, so after graduation, I hope if you can, you can stay here. You know, do something for uh, for for our Chinese, you know, outbound investors, and uh, at least you can could be a very good translator. <laughs> I'm not sure my friends in UK they want to uh, they like you stay here or not. Otherwise, you will take their jobs. Maybe may not they, they may not be good for them, right? Yeah, but if you are a good student, I think they can they will accept you. Mm. Uh, Minister Jin, uh, Mr. Perry, thank you very much for your interesting um, uh, discussions. Uh, Dimitri, Eurasian Dynamics. Um, a very great uh, picture here of the Chinese trains. Uh, both of my parents are railway engineers from Russia, from the Soviet times. And uh, they are very much passionate about new technologies. And they always ask me, when do the Chinese trains actually come to Russia and the former Soviet Union? So are there any comments on uh, when do you plan to, uh, maybe from China, introducing this? Uh, high-speed technologies to Russia. They, they were discussing the high-speed rails um, and the um, projects. Uh, maybe any comments on this? You Thank mean you. High, high-speed trains, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, why do we want to export our export high, high-speed trains to Russia, right? Yeah, because and help Ru build infrastructure. Because Russia is our neighbor and a uh, very big territory. Uh, you need, they need better, you know, from, uh, from uh, Far East to Moscow. It took a long time, you know. If uh, you have the high-speed train, uh, that will save a lot of time, save a lot of energy, and save a lot of, you know, uh, you know uh, that will create a lot more opportunities for the business people and for the travelers, for tourists. Are you from Russia, right? Yeah. Uh, from Moscow? Uh, from okay, from uh, Harbin, of, uh, uh, east uh, north, north, north city, Harbin to Moscow, what well, took about seven days a week, usually, by the normal train. But for, uh, if you have the high speed train, it will save about half of the time, at least. And a lot of, uh, as could I say, you know, and a lot of uh, robberies happen in a long time train, you know, every day. It will take one, you know, one week from Harbin. So a lot of, uh, many, many passengers, you know, they got robbed, you know, uh, there are a lot of robberies cases every day almost happened. Okay, that's getting better now, the situation is getting better and better. 
because we have more and more police, more and more, you know, you know, uh, you know, assistance in the, in the train. So if you have the high speed train, uh, you can you can solve all the problems. Yeah. Thank you very much for your question. When will it run? When more, huh? No, when. When, when will the train go from, uh, from Beijing to Moscow? Do you think? Uh, within five years, within I five hope. Years. Mm. I yeah. Stop. I wonder while we Sorry. can get uh, you know gas, natural gas enough, we can send uh, our you know high speed train faster earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to stop unfortunately. Um, uh, and uh, it's my, my... May I ask you a favor? Yeah. Uh, there is, uh, can you give an opportunity to that beautiful girl? Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I, I really enjoy your speech. I thought that's absolutely brilliant. And my question is really short. You know, President Xi Jinping is actually a big fan of football, and he has talking a lot about potential opportunity for UK and China to collaborate on football-related, you know, industries. So could you please comment on that? Thank you. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Xi Jinping, you know, uh, allow me, uh, don't say President Xi Jinping. No, he also he's also a football fan, and uh, he kicked off a lot of uh, you know football match in the past years. And uh, also, uh, when Prince you know uh, when him go to China, uh, naturally they had a meeting talking about a football cooperation. And now China we have a anti-corruption and campaign now. So uh, when you want to watch the football match, uh, that will cost a lot of money, right? That costs a lot of money. But uh, if nobody reported me, I would like to say I really watched a match between uh, Manchester City and uh, another... Uh, huh? Leicester, Leicester City, it's a two versus zero. And also I visited uh, uh, Manchester United. The, I met the general manager. He told me they have a lot of fans in China and asked him how many. Uh, he told me 180. 180 is nothing in China. We have 1.4 billion people. Then he added, Million, <laughs> 180 million funds in China. So they make a lot of money in China. That's why, because Chinese people, they love the football very much, but we are really very sorry for our own team. <laughs> yeah. So with the help from uh, UK, you know, I'm sure our team, football team, will be uh, get much better in the coming years. I hope someday we can, we can beat the UK team. That's okay. our dream, the China dream, right? The China yeah. dream is still yeah, okay. uh, Minister Councillor Jin, uh, I'm getting messages flashed up at me that we have to stop. And uh, I'd like to thank you very much indeed for coming to join us and uh, your, your lovely relaxed style of talking. Uh, it, it's interesting, um, you just talk about the new normal and in the course of the conversation you mention each year the average growth will be about 800 billion renminbi. Just think of the management tasks of getting it all right. Uh, and you wonder, can China cope with all of this? The questions that were being asked about energy and so on. And then you look at 35 years of successful growth of China, the recognition that you've got to slow down and deal with things in a more balanced way. Uh, it's all very obvious and as you look out ahead, this room is full of people who want to know how we, British and Chinese, can participate in the opportunities ahead. And you've inspired us in football, although you mentioned all the wrong football teams, but I'll talk to you, I'll talk to you about that afterwards. <laughs> you know there's only one football team. It's called Arsenal. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll get by the time Mr. Jin leaves, he'll say the right team first. But, um, the opportunities of uh, Sino-British relations are just entering a global phase now. And although the world is complicated and things are, decisions are difficult to make, 
our Chancellor has made a very brave decision in the last few days to be the first to go to the AIIB, and I think that reflects um, an ice-breaking spirit that we yeah, had I, right back in 1952-53, and you reminded us it took 10 days to get from London to Beijing. So here we are with the opportunity to wish you great success in your time here in the UK, to thank you for coming and sharing with us the slides, and for talking in English, which I cannot do in Chinese. So thank you very much indeed. You've got a lot of friends here who will be Many anxious friends. to help you. We have a lot of new friends. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I also have a very old friend, more than 30 years of friends. Yeah. Mr. David, yes, yes, could you please stand up for mm -hmm. just one second? Now say hello to our Chinese friend here. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> know him, right? Uh, quite a few people here now. Here. Mm. And he was, uh, he was a minister council like me nowadays. Mm -hmm. In 1984, uh, the, the minister consulate to China, to Beijing. That's the first person I knew, I met in the UK when I was a UK desk officer. Thank you very much, and thank you for your copy of the very, very, very valuable pictures we took, you know. In 1985. 1985, with oh. our late premier, Zhao Ziyang. Oh. And, uh, uh, your former ambassador to China, Mr. Evans. Thank you so much. On that thank, note. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much.